What does the developer do day to day? Well, we do a lot with Git, and since I talked about Git commit messages last time, I'm gonna talk about Git rebasing today. Stay tuned. As always, I want you to be a part of my tribe, so hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you haven't hit that bell to get notifications of new releases, go ahead and click that too. So this weekend, I went to a conference called Ruby for Good. It's a four-day conference where a whole bunch of people get together and they build an application for a nonprofit. So we try to make the world gooder. That's the slogan. And I convinced a young lady named Liz to help me demonstrate rebasing. And while she didn't want her face on the screen, she did graciously loan me some of her time to record her screen and set up things so that I can demonstrate rebasing for you. Okay, so just a heads up, there is no code involved. We're simply uh, editing a readme file. It's just like a Word file, but for online and for GitHub and things like that. And I also gave her contributor rights to my repo for simplicity's sake, otherwise she would have to go through a completely different set of steps in order to show this. And that was too much for this example. However, if you do want to see that in action, let me know in the comments below and I will figure out a way to demonstrate that for you another time. So before this uh, video recording got started, Liz did pull down my branch and I want you to notice that she does not use the same technologies I use. She is using GitLab for all the Git related items and she is using Visual Studio Code for her text editor. So first she pulls down her code from GitHub and into her local environment. She uses GitLab to create a branch off of master. And then she goes into her text editor and she edits the readme and adds a little bit of text to the top of the file. So after she adds text to the readme, she saves it in her text editor, then goes back to GitLab to do any Git related things. This includes Git add as well as the adding the git commit message. She does add a summary as well as a description. You don't always have to do this, but you do need the summary. You can leave off the description if you want to. So just to show a little bit more complexity and show that you can have multiple commit messages uh, come down to your branch from uh, GitHub, I did ask Liz to do a second um, edit and do another git add and git commit with a git commit message. So if this was the terminal, you'd first do your git add, git commit, and then you would have to do a git push. It looks like in GitLab, you just push the publish button and it handles that git push for you. After that, you wanna go to GitHub and it'll automatically show that there is a new uh, push and ask you if you wanna do a pull request. So you'll do a pull request against master and if you have rights, you'll be able to just merge it. I want to point out that sometimes uh, in bigger companies or more established companies, they will have different checks and balances such as making sure that you uh, added test or making sure that somebody reviewed it before you can merge to master. But because this is simple, all you have to do is merge to master. So that's it for Liz's contribution. I'm very thankful that she allowed me to uh, have some of her time so that I can demonstrate this for you. Uh, next, uh, it was me doing the rebase. So I already had a uh, master on my branch. We both pulled it down at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to master and I am going to create a new branch. My branch is gonna be called demo rebase. And this is simulating that we're making changes on our own branches at the same time. She might have been at her house, I might have been at my house, and we were both breaking on our own branches at the same time. Except for in this case, she was able to merge to master before I did. So I'm going to check out a new branch, that's git checkout, dash b, and then name your branch whatever you want to. Next, I'm going to go into my editor, which is Adam, and I'm going to add some changes to the README. You'll see that I had the original changes that Liz had when she first added stuff, so you won't see anything that she added at this point in time. Next, I'm going to save those changes in my 
um, atom and then I'm gonna go back to the terminal and I'm gonna do a git status it's always good to do a git status so you can see what files that you changed and get that visual cue that you did in fact save things and that you uh, know what to do next and what to do next is do a git add uh, in this case, I'm going to do git add dot and that means git add everything or git add all. You can also, if you have multiple files, you can list out each file individually and do different commit messages for each thing you add. But I only have one change, so I'm just going to do git add dot. Then I'm going to do git commit dash m and I'm going to write my commit message. Okay, so error alert. I just want to point out that the next command is git pull. But I accidentally put in git pull master and that caused all kinds of errors that I had never seen before so I went on this tangent trying to figure it out and it turns out that I just put in the wrong command. Once you're on master, all you have to do is put in git pull. That's it. Now I usually do a git fetch dash p which stands for pruning. And I do this because I want to uh, make it so that my autocomplete is not cluttered with uh, old deleted branches. So you'll find that when you're in your terminal, you can do git checkout, whatever your branch name is. But if you have a whole lot of uh, remote branches that start with the same letter, then your autocomplete is gonna be looking through all those other things that start with B or start with F or whatever your git uh, branch name is. So I do a prune to get rid of those and then when I auto complete, it only has the ones that are actually available and not deleted. So after I do a git fetch dash P, I usually do git branch. Sometimes I have a lot of branch, local branches on my computer and I can't remember what the name of my branch is or sometimes my branch name is really long and I just need a refresher on what the heck I named it. So if you type in git branch, it will list out all your local branches and that'll help you remember what your branch name is. In this case, I did remember, I'm just showing you so that you'll know. So I'm gonna, next I'm gonna type in git checkout uh, in this case demo rebase so git checkout demo rebase and that is going to take me to the demo rebase branch so after you've checked out your branch in this case the branch name is D demo rebase uh, you're going to do a rebase and you're going to do git rebase master and that means you're going to rebase against master once you do that you may en encounter a uh, merge conflict in this case I did now I have a text editor called Atom and it is by GitHub and I have a plugin that allows me to see the different uh, merge conflict issues. It's just going to show me the git diff essentially. You can also type git diff in your uh, terminal but I like this visual better uh, so I use Atom. Now I decided to pick Liz's. I could have picked mine, in this case it doesn't really matter, but if you ever come to a git conflict, you want to make sure that you're looking at both person's um, code and that you are combining what makes sense, because you can, in this instance, uh, edit it and combine the two. So once you fix your merge conflicts, you should be able to save it and then go back to your terminal and do git rebase dash dash continue. So let's go through that. That is, you check out master, you pull down master, you check out the branch that you created, and you do git rebase master. You fix your merge conflicts, and then you go back to the terminal and do git rebase dash dash continue. That's it. That's all there is to rebasing on the simple side. In my case, because I chose Liz's changes, um, git was confused. I should just be able to do git rebase dash dash continue, but in this case, it looks as if I didn't make any changes and it's gonna ask me, do, am I sure? Do I really want to do a git uh, add instead? But that's not what I wanna do. The instructions git gives you isn't very intuitive, so I'm just gonna tell you here and now that what you wanna do is git rebase dash dash skip. You want to skip all of this because kind of didn't make any changes. You're just leaving it as what's on master. And so you want to skip that and that's gonna continue uh, rebasing through the rest of your commits. 
So for the sake of the demo, I did do a few more changes and I committed that just to show you that my changes were above Liz's. And then I went on ahead and pushed to master. So you can do a git push and enter and that will show you the command you need to push up to GitHub. So that command is git push dash dash set dash upstream origin demo rebase. And you can copy that and then enter it into the command line and push enter and it will do everything for you. It will push it up to GitHub. Then you can go to GitHub and merge your changes into master. So now you can see that all my changes are on top of Liz's and my merge is on top of that. Um, usually it will be like a mush of everything. And I, again, rebasing is better because it creates a nice flow of git history and git commit messages. I know that seemed like a lot of steps, but once you start practicing and get used to it, it's very easy. Hopefully next time we can practice doing an interactive rebase and we will go over these steps again. Um, I'll probably simulate having two people on my own um, to speed up the process just a little bit and I'll teach you how to squash and maybe how to rename some commit messages. If that sounds like a good idea to you, comment below with either what you want to learn about Git, that you're getting better, or any other questions that you may have. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I also hope to see you on Twitter or Instagram. So take some pictures of you doing some Git rebasing and at me or hashtag coding like a boss. See you next time.